All right, welcome back to how to start a restaurant business. Uh, in quick summary, you have developed your concept, so you can clearly define exactly what's going to happen in your business, and you have proven your concept by completing a financial forecast and also identified your startup costs. So you now know what money you can expect to make, and you understand what money you are going to need to get the business going forward. Now we have to decide on things such as location. You know, where are you going to build this restaurant? It could be that you're looking for a strip mall. It could be you're looking at a, an, you know, a mall which has a, which has a variety of stores. You could be in a food court or you could be in a standalone uh, structure. You, know, you could be in an old part of town. You could be in a new part of town. Most important thing you need to know is, you know, what size are you looking for? Now, we have identified that in our financial forecast because we did it through concept. You know that you want to have a restaurant that's got 30 seats, for example. So, therefore, you're looking for a space which is 15 to 1,600 square feet. And that's what you must stick to. You can't get carried away thinking that, oh, yeah, there's this really good spot, you know, right downtown. The problem is the spot downtown isn't going to cost $30 a square foot. It's going to cost $70 a square foot. Once you have uh, looked at a location and you've decided this is where you want to be, you then have to see how you are going to set the whole place up. You've got to look at equipment. You've got to look at furniture and fixtures. You've got to look at things like parking. You know, do how much parking do I have? Simply stated, your forecast states what your concept can support in rent, so do not exceed that. If you have built into your, if you've proven the concept at $2,500 a month in rent, you can only look for spaces that are $2,500. you got to look at your competition. Who are they? Now again, it could be that you're opening up a restaurant that uh, nobody else has opened up. You know, no one else has come up with this concept before. And you have to ask yourself why. But if you are committed to the concept and you've proven it and tested it, well, then you go out and you look at who has businesses that are similar to yours. Not exactly the same, but are similar. Where are they? Go and assess them. What do they do very well? What do they do poorly? Because if you can see that somebody's doing something very well, if they've got outstanding service, that means that if you're going to compete with these people, you have to have outstanding service yourself. What they do poorly, maybe their washrooms are a disaster. Maybe their physical plant is a little old and tired. So therefore, you can capitalize on that. If you're going to compete with these people, and we don't like competing, remember that? We like to dominate. But if you're going to go up against these people... You've got to understand what their weaknesses are and then exploit them. Look at who works there. Who have they got? What style of servers do they have? What style of counter people do they have? Because these are the types of people who you're going to end up hiring. You could end up hiring them. These people could end up working for you. So you have to understand those little bits and pieces about the business. And then most importantly, look at who are their customers? Because the people who are attending at that restaurant could very easily be the same people who are going to attend at your restaurant when you produce a better product, when you have a better physical plant, when your service is better than that existing restaurant. So competitive analysis is more the idea of just getting a handle on what's going on in the industry and specifically in your segment of the industry. And never stop analyzing your competition. Always be having a look at them. See what they're doing. Because it could be that they come up with an excellent idea. I mean, if you look at Burger King versus McDonald's versus Wendy's versus Harvey's versus A&W, you know, one person starts to serve breakfast, you turn around, and within 12 months, they're all serving breakfast. You know, one starts serving desserts, they all start serving desserts. So if the big boys... Are watching the competition and responding and reacting to what the competition is doing you should be doing the same thing and be very aware that the competition is going to be checking you out so any competitive advantage that you think that you have early on may vanish 
because other people are going to come in and steal your ideas, steal the way in which you market, and that's okay. When I was in my own business, I loved competition. I loved people coming in and building restaurants and trying to go after me because I know that I just knew that they couldn't do it. There's no way that, that they were not as committed as I. Let's look at design. You've picked your location, you've gone in, you've checked out who else is around, what other, uh, what other businesses are in, in, in your sector. Now, you remember that when you go to design your restaurant, you've got to build it for your customers. Don't build a massive kitchen, don't build big offices, don't do all that kind of stuff, because that has nothing to do with your customers. Your customers don't go in the kitchen, and they don't go in the office, and they don't go in the stock rooms. And they don't go in the back alley. They don't do all that kind of stuff. What they do is they go in customer areas. So if you've only got 1,800 square feet, well, shoehorn a kitchen into 1,800 square feet. You know, shoehorn the staff area. Eliminate the office. The biggest problem you're going to have when you deal with a, a designer is that the designer wants to win an award and you want a functional workspace for your customers. Okay? So they're going to be looking at it from a totally different perspective from the way that you have to look at it. Build your kitchen to be easy to clean. You know, most important thing, you know, the smaller the kitchen, the better, because therefore it's more efficient. You can't put as many people back there. Everything's within easy reach. You open up a cupboard and you've got dry products there. You open up a fridge and the, and the, and the products are there. You've got a walk-in freezer in the back. Everything, the low boy fridges are all are all easily accessible. Just make it easy to clean. So at the end of the night, someone can go in there and just hose the whole place down and you're ready to go the next day. You know, a lot of people make the mistake of having drywall in their, in their kitchen areas. Well, that's just, you know, it gets dirty, it gets wet, and then all of a sudden it's not clean anymore. Forget an office. You can always have an office at home. If you have to do any accounting work, you can do it sitting at a booth. You can go over and sit sit at a booth in your restaurant prior to opening or after closing and do all your payroll and do all your, uh, all your bits and pieces that you have to do from an accounting and bookkeeping point of view. And when you are thinking about designing your restaurant and setting it all up, don't pretend that you can do what you can't. Go again. Hire somebody who can draw it out so you can look at the different ways in which you can utilize the space. Extremely important to not get outside your lane. You are good at what you do. Hire other people who are good at what they do, and you'll end up winning. When you come up with a name, take your time. I get people who come up with the name first off, and I go, why? I said, you don't, you don't need a name right now. If you're going to have an incorporated company, you can do it as a numbered company. Right? You can have, you know, one, two, three, four, five, Ontario Limited. You know? And remember that when you come up with a name, a name is something that has to stand the test of time. It's going to be around for a while. You're going to be around for a while. So there are names and then there are taglines. So you could have a name which is, as I did when I opened up my bar restaurants, I called them William Brewsters. And then the tagline was Tap and Grill. So people knew right off the bat, okay, Brewster's was the name of the place, and it was always known as Brewster's from that day that I opened until the end, because it was such a good name. And then Tap and Grill, you knew what it was. It's a restaurant, and it's a bar. Right? So the tagline is what will tell people what it is. The name is something that you want to have catchy, memorable, different you know, look around at the uh, successful restaurants and look at what, what their names are. You know, in a lot of cases, McDonald's doesn't mean burgers. It means burgers now. Harvey's means burgers now. Now, of course, there is Burger King. You know, that's somebody who actually told the customers what their business was right in their name, which is fine, too. It's great to have a name of a fictitious, uh, a fictional person. Great to have the name of a fictional person uh, as your company name because you can then blame things on that person. When I had my restaurant, which was called William Brewster's, I used to blame all kinds of things on William. You know, this is William's favorite salad. This is William's recipe. This is William's idea. And it just makes life so much simpler for you 
um, when, when it comes to menus, when it comes to marketing. And again, use professionals. Just like I talked about with designers, designing your place. When it comes to coming up with names and logos and things like that, use a professional. It won't cost you a lot of money, but you'll have a chance to see a lot of different options. Okay, They'll present different options to you. And don't just use one. Make it a bit of a competition. Get this designer working against that designer. And you'll end up with a great name, great tagline, great logo. Once you've got your space, you know, you've designed it, you've got a name, all that stuff. Now you have to take your menus from a concept stage into a finalized stage. So you have to start getting very specific about what items are going to be on the menu, uh, how are they prepared, because you need to do that because you have to look at your equipment requirements. You have to know that, okay, I need a flat top, I need a broiler, I need a convection oven, I need a salamander, I need a salad station. You know, you need to know those things and you also need, need to know the sizes of each one of those pieces of equipment. You know, do I need four burners or do I need six? Well, if I have a lot of pasta items on my menu, I'm probably going to need a six burner stove. If I'm doing a lot of sandwiches, then I'm probably going to need a larger flat top. Uh, if I'm doing salads, and salads are going to be a main feature of my menu, well, I need to have a really good quality salad section with a low boy fridge, roll top, you know, with compartments that can handle, you know, 20 different ingredients. So I have to look at my menu i have to look at how it is each item is going to be prepared and then i have to look at how i can spread out the items across the kitchen so i don't have everything jammed up on one person you know i could have two people on a hotline and one person on a salad i want them being equally busy so i might want to put the fryers right next to the salad people so if someone's ordering a sandwich the, the sandwich could be coming with a side caesar or with a side of fries. The person who's in the salad section can look after both of those. So they are responsible for setting up the side for the main dish that is being looked after by the person who is on the uh, flat top and on the broiler. And I've got somebody else who's looking after uh, the salamander, somebody else is looking after the convection oven, and who's maybe doing the running into the uh, fridges to bring raw product out. You're looking at different menus, of course. You've got your lunch menu. You've got your dinner menu. You may have a snack menu. You've got a catering menu. You've got to do them all. You've got to do all those menus. And the biggest mistake that people make in 2015 is they try and be everything to everybody. They're going to have pasta. They're going to have pizza. They're going to have sandwiches. They're going to have wings. They're going to have nachos. They're going to have shawarma. They're going to have... You know, Chinese, they're going to have all these different ethnic foods. You're going to have all these. Don't do that. If You know, be really good at what you do, and you'll be noted for that in the marketplace.